My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this video, we will answer a very frequent question, which is how to make um, small keys similar to what we have in, in most Zelda games. So, which means um, consumable keys. We saw in a previous tutorial, in tutorial number 20, uh, 29, to be very precise, how to make doors and how to make doors that can be opened by a specific uh, item, typically a key of course, and we've done let's say the very basic version in that tutorial number, tutorial number 29 but as a reminder we created uh, oops I'm not in the correct map let me just well okay we can type TP to that uh, map and game save okay so this is the map from tutorial 29 and we had the door here and we created an item which is the key specific to that door so it was working and it, it's, it's working great for a unique key that is associated to a, a unique door I mean there are two entities for this door but it's actually the same they, they are both they can both be opened by the same key and by the same and they are saved in the same state and yeah so let's have a look at the script of our key item here chap 29 key it's only one line we simply save the position state of our key here and um, yeah, the opening mode is save game variable required. We could also check uh, here by hero item required chap 29 key. Wait, uh, oh, okay, it's already the case for the second one. I didn't remember. I mean, chapter 29 was a long time ago, but probably when I recorded it, I showed you both ways. So it's it's completely equivalent um, this and typing the name of your save game variable and that in our in that case it's completely equivalent because this key item uh, is associated to that save game variable. So that's the simple case, one unique key that opens only that unique door um, but let's say let's see in this tutorial how to make um, small keys consumable keys uh, similarly to um, to most Zelda games so let's say that we have well we, we will actually use that same sprite uh, door small key oriented to the north of the room um, like that and the other side like that and another one here left layer zero wait wait it should be behind Ah, okay, these were dynamic ties, yes, because my sprite is a bit larger. Okay, just a second, let me turn these to dynamic ties so that they can be above the door. And, okay, we are good um, graphically at least. <laughs> so what we want is a small key item. Um, and when you have, well, you can have multiple small keys for this dungeon. I mean, it looks more like a house, but let's say it's a dungeon. And we want the small keys to be able to open any of the locks. 
and when you use when you open one door it will uh, decrease your number of, of small keys so in that treasure chest we will put a small key so we we actually need a new item and we could create a folder um, for for all keys actually because these the, the small keys in in Zelda are usually local to a particular dungeon so here we will make an item for the the small keys of dungeon one okay dungeon one small key uh, we don't need these the only effect of the small key when you obtain it in a chest is to increase uh, well the number of small keys so on obtaining when we obtain a small key we will uh, we, we actually want to save the number of the, the small key counter in some save game variable so you can name it like uh, as you want I will name it dungeon one small key count Or, or you can say small key amount um, okay and let's see how many we have so far oops sorry local amount game get value dungeon one small key amount and we can type r0 so which means the first time we, we obtain a small key um, this, this will be nil because we don't have it yet we don't have any yet so we will fall back to the value zero and then we will save I mean we will set um, that same value to that same variable to um, the value plus one we increase, we just increase the number of small keys of dungeon one. Okay, so again, the only effect of our small key item is to increase some saved counter. counter. And um, I forgot to put the small key in that chest. Dungeon one small key. Maybe you want to save the tre the chest state. Um, dungeon one small key chest one or just chest one if you want you can decide you, your own save game variable con conventions of course and we'll do a second chest so this one will be saved in another variable so they both give the same item dungeon one small key which means they both will execute this code so that will work we will set the first time we will obtain a key it will be set the variable to one and the second time it will increase it from one to two okay and then you need to configure wait we, we will first check that the treasure chest work i need as always when you create an item you need some dialogue underscore treasure dot the name of the item and here there's a small trap because we put the item inside a folder so the actual full name of the item is keys slash dungeon one small key and then dot the variant and there is only one variant of dungeon one small key so it looks a bit weird like that but it's still underscore treasure dot the name of the item dot the number of the variant and obtaining this item will say you found a small key key you can open a door nearby Okay. Um, 
before we test we need to configure our doors to uh, say that they can only op be opened um, when the value of that counter uh, not this one sorry that was tutorial 21 when the value of that of that counter is uh, greater than zero than zero so what you want to check here is not the, not the chest but the doors opening mode of the doors of the locked doors should be save game variable required and the save game variable is dungeon one small key amount furthermore we want to decrease it to decrement it when opening the door so we need to check this checkbox here and finally maybe we want to show a dialogue if we don't have enough small keys if this is zero uh, we want to show a dialogue so we can call the dialogue small key required okay uh, let's create that dialogue small key required you need a small key to open this door good back to the map we did configure this uh, first door maybe you want to save the door state otherwise we could leave the map come back and and waste another small key that would be bad dungeon one door door a for instance and okay i will recreate the other two by copy pasting that one because we configured a lot of things the door state uh, how to open it the fact that it decreases that counter and the dialogue the dialogue when you are trying to open the door but you don't have enough keys this one is south of the, of its room okay um this one is independent from uh, that one it's we can you can save its state in another save game variable but it needs the same counter and same for this one okay and here it's it says reset decrement when opening um, because it will detect the type actually if you want to know all details it will detect the type of that save game variable uh, if it if it doesn't exist at all then the door uh, will not be able to to get opened and we will show that dialogue if it exists and it is a number like in our case we did set it to zero and to one etc then it will decrease the counter when you check this and if it is a boolean uh, the door will be able to get opened if the boolean is true and if you check this it will set it to false so that's also a possibility but for small keys it's it's an, a number because there are there are more than one sub, uh, small keys that can exist in the same dungeon um okay so let's test okay i found a small key but something's wrong here uh line 18 it's not value it's amount Yeah, I, I can um, sh show you that, that code while I'm testing. Okay, so first of all, if I try to open a door... Oh, <laughs> okay, the text is overflowing my dialog, bo dialog box. But that's a detail. I cannot open it yet because I don't have the save game variable. if I take a small key I should be able to open it but I should not be able to open a second one and just to be really really sure let's check that if you open that one first it works and 
you then cannot open the second one unless you take the second key and now it works and one more check if we take the two keys first we should be able to open both doors cool so it works again you need an item that is uh, specific to each dungeon because if dungeon will have its counter that item um, does not have itself any possession state but it has an effect only when you obtain it it will set the value to some uh, it, it will it will increment some counter some saved counter um, by the way um, I forgot to set a sprite to my dungeon one small key item um, so I, I don't have a sprite here uh, ready for this tutorial but of course in a real game you want a sprite as always when you create a, a treasure but um, yeah we can that, that doesn't prevent me to prevent me to explain from explaining the, the small keys it's just that when you get it when you get a small key you don't see it the hero is brandishing an empty sprite here but let's say that we are fine with that um, yeah what I, what I wanted to point out is that the small key item is is just is just a, a refill of of some other counter and the small key item itself does not have a position state it's similar to um, rupees I mean gems in that game there is n it doesn't make sense to say that uh, for example green rupees are saved there is no such thing as do I own uh, the green rupee item uh, their only effect is to increase some counter so it's the same for our small keys and um, yeah that's why it can be confusing because you might be tempting in your door editor here to check to, to configure your door opening mode as item required and here to say uh, dungeon one small key and then you will have some error telling you that uh, wait dungeon one small key is not saved so there is no uh, amount associated there is no saved amount associated to dungeon one small key um, and that's really because this small key item should just should just be seen as a refill like rupees like arrows and not as a counter the counter would be for example arrows are the refill and bow is the counter um, yeah i hope it's it's a little bit more clear now but I understand it can be confusing. The really the the, simp the easiest way to implement consumable keys is to save them in one variable of your choice and to configure doors to be linked to to check and to decrement that uh, variable. If you really wanted to have an item that saves the amount of small keys that would also be possible i mean that's what the bow does actually for arrows and, and not for small keys but uh, the distinction between bow and arrow is exactly the same uh, as what i was trying to explain arrows arrow refill is just a refill and there is no such thing as do i own arrows but there is uh, yeah for the bow there is there is a position state and there is a saved amount so here we just implemented the refill item but not a, we don't have a, any counter item we could do one uh, that would be an alternative solution and we 
could call it the, the bunch of keys if you want and then it would be possible to uh, use this option here but I, I find it m way easier to just directly link it link it to link your doors to the save game variable of small keys for the current dungeon um, okay so I wanted to, to do this tutorial to clarify how to implement small keys because and I think it's natural everyone get it wrong the first time and it's very tempting to um, to, to check this option item required mm, and then uh, maybe it's hard to understand the, there are messages that tells you wait uh, small keys are not saved and it's if you look at the t uh, at the code again it's true we don't save anything I mean we we save something here in, in the code but uh, it's not associated to to the item itself like we do for instance in the fire rod we say that the possession state of the fire rod is here saved in that variable for the bow we save the possession of the bow and the number of arrows so it's an item with an associated counter and when you have an item with an associated counter then it's possible to configure a door or a chest uh, with this option here uh, okay Sorry for confusing you with that, but it's so easy to, to go wrong and, and so confusing that I really want to, to try to clarify it and to help. Um, that's why I wanted to insist a little bit. <laughs> but as a summary, you can quite easily implement consumable small keys. Optionally, they can be uh, local to all your dungeons. You just have to save them to make multiple items uh, yeah one one for each dungeon and and you can just give this item in, in in some chests and configure your doors to uh, to be allowed to get open when the the amount of small keys is uh, positive okay thank you all for watching sorry if it was uh, a bit uh, a bit confusing but uh, i hope it's i still hope it will help don't hesitate to ask questions i, I know it's a very frequent topic and i will see you next time bye